Hi, I'm Cassie Hauswald. I work for the Nature Conservancy and I'm going to talk today a little bit about freshwater mussels and why the Wabash is um, one of the best places in the whole world for freshwater mussels. So you, when you think about uh, maybe uh, big game species, lions and um, giraffes, you think of Africa. And when you think of marsupials, kangaroos and platypus, you think of Australia. When we talk about freshwater mussels, you need to think North America because we have the greatest diversity of freshwater mussels of anywhere in the world. And the Wabash River, where we are today, is home to over 75 species of freshwater mussels. Not all of those still live in the Wabash River, but once that many species could be found. So today... Freshwater mussels are called, they're considered macroinvertebrates. So if you recall, an invertebrate doesn't have a backbone. And macro just means it's big. Micro would be small. So these are visible with the naked eye and they have no backbone. Now this is a mussel shell. There is no living mussel in this any longer. Um, and you can tell when a mussel is dead because it gapes open, its shell is open. Whereas in a live mussel that's actually alive and feeding and filtering in the water, um, you're not gonna see all of this shell. We've talked about dead, dead shells and it's easy to find dead shells. It's not so easy to find living mussels, but there are thousands of them in the water in the Wabash. And when you look for a living mussel, if you notice this shell, this has not been dead very long. The top part of it has algae, is covered in algae, but this part's pretty clean and clear. And so this tells you that this part was above the, the surface of the stream and this part was buried down in the sediment. And so this is the part you're looking for. And really what you're looking for is just a little um, break in the shell where it's siphoning. So the largest muscle in a muscle is its foot, which it uses. The foot is as long as the shell. And so it has this much of a, of a foot down in the surface of the river, holding it in place when it floods, when there's a lot of water coming. Um, they can live to be over 100 years old. So older than a lot of humans. And if you think about that, mussels filter about 15 gallons of water a day. So one mussel, one mussel, 15 gallons of water a day. So think about that. A five gallon bucket that you might use to wash your windows, three of those buckets for one mussel. So as filter feeders, you have to think about what can I do to help mussels? What can I do to help the other things that are living in the river? And so you just need to think about how to keep water clean, right? How to keep anything that isn't natural out of the water. And so we do that by one, not dumping chemicals, um, any, any kind of oil or gas or herbicide, um, not dumping uh, pharmaceuticals um, or things like that in our water, um, either directly in the river or even um, in your toilet. You wanna throw those things away. Um, and you also want to think about how to protect the stream, how to keep uh, soil from getting in the water. And so that would be by planting uh, vegetation on the banks. Anything that can keep soil from getting in the water is a good thing because if you have lots of soil that buries this muscle and covers it up, it's, it, can't, it can't survive. It is, it's just like us. It doesn't want to drink dirty water. It wants to drink clean water. And so let's help mussels by making the water cleaner for them, which in turn, they will make the water cleaner for us. The variety that I was talking about in species in the Wabash River, this is called a pistol grip. This is a pretty large mussel. And you can kind of see why it might be called a pistol grip. It's kind of decorative and, and looks like something you could hold in your hand. So that's pretty large. Then we have something like this. Also has some bumps on its shell and it's called a pimpleback. So once again, white inside, it's, it's not alive. Um, to look a little more at some variety, this is a mussel called an elk toe, not one I see real commonly. So uh, I like to see this animal and you can see that it's green and it has these rays on it, really nice. So you can imagine, these are kind of creative names, right? And uh, this just speaks to how long these animals have been around. Um, our settlers, the, the pioneers, they named these animals because they saw them with a lot of frequency. And it also used to be legal in Indiana to possess a mussel shell. And they were used to make, they historically have been used to make buttons. And then they were used in the freshwater uh, pearl industry. I don't know if you see a lot of mussels. Do you get out in the river and look around? You can usually find them on a, a sandbar. 
Um, but you can also look around. This is the Wabash River right here in Lafayette and, and find them here. So when you start looking at the variety, you start seeing differences, right? And so this looks very different than this. These are both adults, so this animal just gets a lot smaller than this one. And this is called a three-horned wartyback, one of my favorite names, right? So one, two, three horns on the shell. And uh, mussels are parasites uh, when they're larvae, so they use different fish um, to, to move around in the river. So once, once they fall off the fish and land as a, as a very small shell, they don't move much, but they, they attach to a fish gills, and that's how they move from stream to stream or within streams. And so the three-horned wartyback is one of the few mussels um, that we don't know what the host is for. We still don't, there's, there's still some basic life history that is not known about this animal. So you might wonder why do you see all these mussel shells laying on the, in the river and on the um, river bank? And it can be for a variety of reasons. One, they might have, have died a natural death. They, they're old and, and they've, they've gone on. Many mussels are eaten by a lot of different things, including um, uh, muskrats and river otters. Uh, some species have a really thin shell and so they're real easy to just bite off and, and sort of suck out the, the juicy mussel. Um, but a lot of them are just pried open and so they have a really strong hinge and uh, that, that opens up and, and then a lot of times you just see one piece of that shell. But in the, the living mussel, that mussel holds the, the shell closed. It is illegal to have uh, mussel shells in your possession. But more important, and the reason for that is, is one, um, like I said, they do provide habitat for fish and, and other bugs and critters. When, even when the shell is dead, it returns nutrients back to the river. And so if you do find a mussel shell and you want to look at it, it's fine to pick it up and take a look and study it. There's even a mussel ID app so that you can answer a bunch of questions and learn about mussels. And then you want to put the mussel shell right back where you found it, whether it's alive or dead. If it's alive, it's going to be a little harder to find. Um, but if you, especially if you find a living mussel, you want to put it right back where you found it because it, it likes that spot it's living in, it's able to live there, and there's a lot of places in a river where a mussel can't live. So definitely don't be moving live mussels. And if you find shells, just enjoy them, look at them, and then put them right back where you found them.